So now you're doubling down and saying we have to change history in order to entertain people. Jeez. Welcome back to Orange Hat Reviews, everybody. Hope you're all having a wonderful day. So, um, Woman King star Viola Davis and actor Julius Tenen defend, or defend the Woman King's historical revisionism. We have to take license. We have to entertain people. They have completely missed the point of why people are angry, of why people have panned this film, why it is currently not doing well in the box office. But while Viola Davis and everybody will say that it's because of racism and sexism, it's actually because they're glorifying a tribe of people who made their wealth in slavery. So yeah, amidst criticism that the film avoids addressing its main subject's heavy participation in the Atlantic slave trade, star Viola Davis and actor Julius Tenen have defended the woman king's decision to shy away from the Kingdom of Dahomey's active participation in one of the history's darker moments on the grounds that we have to entertain people. So essentially... Historical accuracy means nothing as long as you uh, entertain people. You're going to glorify the most ruthless slavers in history in order to entertain people. Wow. The delusions of Hollywood, folks. Set in the historical African kingdom of Dahomey, now modern-day Benin, during the opening years of the 1820, the, un or the woman king tells a fictional version of the 1823 Dahomey Revolt and focuses on the role of General Naniska, or Nansika, or whatever the fuck her name is, I don't care, and her all-female Agoji warriors as they fight to liberate their state from subordination under the rival Oyo Empire. However, the Dahomey's existence was not entirely as altruistic as the film presents. As in reality, the kingdom was one of the heaviest participation in the African slave trade. Throughout its entire existence, the Dahomey's economic stability was based on their enslavement of neighboring tribes, whose people could be captured by the kingdom by way of war or specifically targeted restocking raids as I have co or covered in the Hollywood versus uh, history thing. From here, or from there, the Dahomey would force the captured into slavery, with some being sold off to the European slavers for profit, and others kept in servitude by the kingdom's own elite. Yet, this aspect of the Dahomey's history receives little attention in The Woman King, as the film's tracking and or tracking or tackling of the subject ultimately amounts to a B plot in which protagonist general Naniska or Nansika or whatever is shown arguing to be vocal opponent of the opponent to no avail. As a result of this creative decision, the Woman King's narrative faced a massive wave of pushback in the weeks leading up to its September 16th premiere, as critics felt it was disingenuous to ignore the real-world history in favor of a girl-boss narrative, particularly when the cast and crew's neoliberal-leaning ideological peers would absolutely shred any film try it, that tried to do the same with a white or Asian subject, basically saying that if people made... A movie like this about white people trying to end slavery or but also changing history and making the white people good well um yeah they'd be panned for it because white people are evil same goes for the Asian people they would do the same thing for Asians but these criticisms have done little to phase Davis and Tenen, who believed that the said sidestepping of the historical record was necessary for the film's success. What success? 
Asked by Variety Senior Awards Editor Clayton Davis during the pr post-premiere interview for their thoughts on the pushback, Davis asserted, First of all, I agree with director Gina Prince by the woods, uh, saying that you're not going to win an argument on Twitter. No, well, I can agree with that. We entered the story where the kingdom was in flux at a crossroads. No, they weren't. They were looking to find some way to keep their civilization and kingdom alive, so they continued to sell slaves. It wasn't until the late 1800s that they were decimated. Most of the story is fictionalized. It has to be. In support of Davis's argument, her husband, Tenen, who appears in the film as Moru, added, We are now what we call edutainment. They mix the word ed entertainment and education. Edutainment. It's no longer about escapism and entertainment. It's about educating and lying to you folks. They're now admitting that they're no longer about entertaining you. So they kind of contradicted themselves. But they want to educate you instead. And they're educating you with false history. It's history, but we have to take license. We have to entertain people. If we just told a history lesson, which we very well could have, that would be a documentary. Unfortunately, people wouldn't be in the theaters doing the same thing we saw or this weekend. We didn't want to shy away from the truth. Well, then why did you? Continued Tenen. The history is massive and there are truths on that that there are. If people want to learn more, they can investigate more. Oh, we have already have. And we have found your film disgusting. I will not watch it, nor review it. Still responding to the initial question, Davis went on to are on an unrelated tangent and recalled part of the story that hit me was an artist or as an artist was these women were unwanted what they were recruited between the ages of 8 and 14 they were the only women who were not considered desirable no one wanted to marry them they were unruly they were recruited by the king to fight for the kingdom of Dahomey. They were not allowed to marry or have children. The ones who refused the call were beheaded. That's also a part of the story. So basically you're trying to say, woe is me about the slavers. That doesn't excuse what they did. So you're basically saying, we were vic or they were victims because they were undesirable. That doesn't change the fact that they still beheaded other people, ripped off their junk, ripped or cut off their heads and ripped out their lower jaws. And mass executed hundreds to thousands of unusable slaves. People are being emotionally shifted. Davis also drifted on. I saw a TikTok video today of women in the bathroom of an AMC theater, and I don't think they knew each other. They were all chanting and ruminating. They cannot be quantified by, that cannot be quantified by words. The Woman King is now playing in theaters. Yeah, um, so basically, because she literally has no defense of this film, because this defense that they gave was piss poor. She went off onto some weird tangent to try to get away from the uncomfortable truths of the questions that were being asked about them. Folks, I have said in other videos that this film should never have been made. You don't do a woman empowerment movie by saying or by glorifying people who were actually slavers who sent the slaves over to the Americas. And it was the British and the French who destroyed them in order to end slavery in that part of the world.
But nobody wants to say that out loud. Nobody wants to point out that white people were responsible for ending slavery. Yeah. So, as much as Viola Davis and her uh, entourage of idiots wants to say that this movie is a female empowerment movie and they were just as much as victims as everybody else. No, they weren't. No, they weren't. They are the villains of real history. There's nothing that can make me sympathize with them. Nothing. Their actions spoke louder than anything else that they could say or do. Beheading and killing children, ripping off people's genitals and cutting off their heads, ripping off their lower jaws. Yeah. Selling children into slavery, putting them on boats so that they could go over to the Americas where slaves were not only used for labor, but they were raped and beaten and killed to set examples for anybody who dared try to defy the slave masters in the United States. So yeah, I am going to admit that the United States were very ruthless themselves, but it was the people who caught these slaves and sold them who are even more vile. Yes, slavery and racism is a thing and was a thing back then. It is a historical fact. I'm not going to shy away from it. But what these people did should never have been glorified on film and should never have been lied about on film. If you're going to tell a story about historical events, you want to adapt it as accurately as possible. And saying that, oh, we fought, or they had people who were naysayers. No. No. They didn't. The Dahomey were slaughtered by the French and British because they continued their slave-practicing ways. Anyway, folks, that is going to be the video. You all know the drill. Like, comment, subscribe, share, all that jazz. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. What do you think about Viola Davis and her husband trying to actually defend this film by saying, we changed the history so that we could entertain people and educate them? It's edutainment. Bullshit. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below, folks. This has been Orange Hat Reviews. Stay humble.